Hey, what is up, mortals? It is Tall Dragon here, and before we get into today's video, there's something I'd like to say. I'd like to let you all know that we have a merch store. Some of the items in it are only available for a limited amount of time, so if you're interested, go into the description and check it out. Each purchase helps us make more content. Secondly, if this video hits 300 likes by the end of the week, we will continue this what if. Thirdly, if you didn't know, only 41.3% of you guys are subscribed to us, so please hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon. Now with that out of the way, let's get into the story. Izuku sat outside the base of operations for the wild wild pussycats, the cool morning air breeze playing with his hair. He had gotten here a lot earlier than his other days to give him plenty of time to mentally prepare for what he had come here to do. He checked the time on his watch. This was time for Yawara Chitora, known by his pronoun Tiger, to come out of the tall building and begin his morning patrol. And so Izuku settled in for the last day of his mission. But Tiger never left. Izuku began to panic, looking back at the notes he had taken to make sure he didn't misread the time. He hadn't. Tiger was supposed to leave the building at the same time every day. Had something happened? Were the wild wild pussycats somehow onto his plan? Had they noticed him sitting outside the past few days taking notes? Had his target, Shino Sasaki, also known as Mandalay, taken notice of him following her when she left work? He started to consider calling off the mission as doubt and anxiety began to clod his mind. But then the towering form of Tiger exited the building and started on his usual path down the sidewalk, deeper into the city. Izuku let out a sigh of relief. Tiger walked past him sitting on the bench and nodded his greeting to Izuku like he had before. A few steps past the bench, Tiger stopped and turned around. Hey, aren't you that kid who's been hanging around here the last few days? Tiger asked, a spark of curiosity in his eyes. Oh, um, hey Tiger, I, um... Izuku had not prepared for this encounter, as Tiger had never really acknowledged him directly. He scrambled to find the words to explain himself. Tiger laughed. I think I see what's going on here, he finally said. Panic once again said into Izuku's mind, Oh, uh, you do? Izuku was prepared to make a quick run for it, worried that his actions during his research had somehow raised the suspicion of the fighting hero. Of course I do, kid. I am a pro hero after all. Not much gets past me, Tiger laughed again. You're dreaming of joining the agency, aren't you? You've been sitting out here scribbling in your notebook, taking notes I imagine well. He looked at Izuku up and down. You're built well for your age. What's your quirk? Izuku's attitude darkened considerably at the word quirk. He glared up at Tiger, struggling to contain his rage. Well, um, you see, Tiger, I'm, a, uh, am quirkless. Izuku was gritting his teeth, struggling to force the words out in a normal tone. Oh, I see, Tiger said, short and to the point. Well, I hate to be the man who has to break it to you, but it's impossible to become a pro hero without a quirk. You would be better off hanging around the police station. Maybe you can find a civilian job with them. I'm sorry, kid. Tiger turned and began to walk down his usual patrol path. Zuku stared hard at the shrinking figure of Tiger. He was overcome with violent anger. He wanted to run Tiger down and attack him, beat him into the same bloody mess as Bakugo, show him that he didn't need to quirk to be strong, but he withheld from those actions. Tiger was a very competent fighter with a strong quirk, and would undoubtedly beat Zuku in seconds before taking him into the police. If they read everything in his note, he would probably end up in jail, and then his efforts would all be wasted. Izuku closed his eyes and began counting, calming himself and focusing on what he had worked so hard for. The day proved to be anything other than a routine day at the Wild Wild Pussycats Agency, however. Shortly after lunchtime, Mandalay suddenly left the building and began walking in the direction of her home. Izuku stared at her in shock. Where was she going? She rarely left the building this early. Was she on a mission? Would she still return home at a normal time? He decided to call her. Izuku followed Mandalay down the usual route to her home. She stopped and bought some groceries and continued on her way. Izuku was running through all the possibilities in his head. Was she off work today somehow? Was she sick? Did Tiger report her suspicious behavior outside the agency? But how could they have known she was the target? Did she actually notice him following her the last couple of days? Izuku was so caught up in the thought he almost didn't realize they had arrived at the gated neighborhood. He had to do something, and soon. Mandalay! Izuku called out to her just before she reached the guard booth at the gate. She turned to see a younger boy, maybe early high school age. Do I know you? She asked, her voice somewhat strained. No, of course not, but um... Izuku began to struggle with finding the right words he, he was improvising. I'm a huge fan of the Wild Wild Pussycats, and I saw you leave the agency earlier. I wanted to come check on you to make sure you were okay. Oh, that's nice of you. It's always good to see a fan with concern for the well-being of his favorite heroes. I'm not feeling well, so I left early to come home and rest. She turned and continued towards the guard. Wait, Izuku ran to catch up with her. 
Let me help you with your groceries then. It's the least I could do for you. If you're not well. Mandalay flashed a gorgeous smile at Izuku. I suppose I would be alright. These bags are pretty heavy, and I'm not feeling very strong at all today. She handed the bags to Izuku and the guard opened the gate for them. Before we get back into the story, I'd like to say that we've got a second channel called Anime Deep Dive. Anime Deep Dive goes over the hard facts of the anime presented. Now in case you guys didn't know, we have a third channel called Anime Theory. Anime Theory mainly focuses on a large variety of mind-boggling anime theories. If you're interested in content like this, please go check the description below or click the eye icon in the top right corner. Now with that out of the way, let's get back into the story. Izuku began to feel bad. Was he really going to attack this poor woman now? She was sick and so innocent and trusting of him despite not even knowing him. Maybe heroes weren't so bad after all. But then he remembered his encounter with Tiger this morning and his words. Impossible to be a pro hero. Work with the police station as a civilian instead. Tiger had meant it in the nicest way possible, but the thought brought back Izuku's hatred and rage. Stepping into the beautiful house owned by Mandalay didn't help him either. It was beyond luxurious with expensive furniture and appliances throughout. You can just set the groceries on the counter. Mandalay hesitated. I just realized I didn't get your name. I'm so sorry, it completely slipped my mind. She turned to see Izuku standing in the doorway, his knuckles white gripping the bags. My name? It's Izuku Midoriya. He was struggling to contain himself once again. Tiger's attitude in the lavish house just reinforced what he already felt. Heroes were overpaid, overappreciated, entitled pieces of scum. He couldn't bring himself to look at Mandalay, choosing to stare at the floor instead. Izuku... Midoriya? Mandalay was deep in thought. I think I heard a rumor about you. Something about you attacking and brutally beating another student? She stopped mid-sentence with a gasp. Izuku had suddenly dropped the bags and rushed at her while she was distracted. The memory of the fight with Bakugo had set him off. Mandalay had just gotten her hands up to defend herself when he threw his first punch. She may be sick, but she was still a pro hero and was well trained in her reaction time and hand-to-hand -hand combat skill. Mandalay began to back up, blocking the unyielding flurry of blows Izuku was throwing at her. She threw a sharp kick to Izuku's knee, knocking him off balance, before she drove a sharp elbow into his nose, staggering him back towards the doorway. Blood poured from his nostrils and his eyes were watery, but he was prepared for the fight. He had gotten reckless in his rage, but the strike cleared his mind. Mandalay wasted no time in following up her counterattack, throwing a stiff jab towards Izuku's already bloody nose, aiming to stun him again. He stepped to the side, slipping past the puncher through a hard hook to Mandalay's ribs. She gasped, the wind knocked from her. Izuku stepped forward, shoving Mandalay back before throwing a jab of his own. He landed hard on her nose, snapping her head back and causing her to stumble even more back into the counter. She had nowhere to run now. Why are you doing this? Mandalay screamed at him. I've never done anything to you! What's wrong with you? Izuku didn't answer. He moved closer to Mandalay, bombarding her with blows, slipping past her guard occasionally battering her arms and face and ribs. Her guard started to slip as she weakened from the pain, and Izuku began to land more attacks. Soon enough, Mandalay was barely defending herself, as he continued to pound her without mercy. Finally, she sunk to the ground and curled up, her hands over her head. Izuku began to kick her as she lay there, helpless to his onslaught. He eventually tired out and stopped his attack for a second. He could hear Mandalay sobbing. Why? She whimpered out. What did I do to deserve this? I've never hurt anyone! Because, Izuku said coldly, you're a pro hero. You're scum, like all of the others. You live this lavish lifestyle with all of this respect. You never did anything special to deserve it. You're no better than anyone else. I didn't ask for any of that. It just came with the job. I just wanted to help people. She peeked through her guard to see Izuku standing over her, his face and fists bloody, his eyes still full of cold hate. You could have used the money and resources to help even more people. But you choose to live like a queen instead. In a skated neighborhood full of the rich, disconnected from the real world, as if you're too good for anyone. Izuku would not be swayed from how he felt. He knew how pro heroes were. Once they realized they couldn't win a fight, they would try to talk their way out of it like the cowards they were. I'm so sorry, Izuku. Please just stop. I can't beat you. You've won. Please just leave me alone now. Mandalay cried to him. But Izuku wasn't done. He resumed kicking the small, curled-up woman laying at his feet. She cried and screamed as she shrunk even smaller, trying to minimize the damage dealt to her body. Scum! That's all you heroes are! Do you know what Tiger told me today? He told me that I would never be a hero because I'm quirkless. That's all anyone ever says. But look at me now! I've outsmarted and beaten a pro hero! You're no stronger than I am! 
Zuccula out all of his pent-up feelings and rage at Mandalay. Eventually, she stopped crying. The only silence broken by her occasional whimpers. Izuku turned and left, turning the light off behind him, leaving the beaten and broken Mandalay laying alone on the dark floor of the kitchen. He grabbed his bag, which he had left by the door, and ran out. He knew he couldn't go home now. Mandalay would report him to the police, and they would be looking for him. He had to go into hiding and figure things out as he went. He ran back to the rear side of the neighborhood, which bordered a forest. He climbed a nearby tree, using it to get over the tall wall, and sprinted off into the thick underbrush. He had succeeded. He had proven what he had always wanted to prove. He could beat a pro hero despite not having the quirk. They weren't as strong as they thought. Thank you all for watching this video to the end. And now there are a few more things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. On behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank the writer for this video as well as the editors for this video. Their details will be in the description below. If you're a voice actor, editor, or writer, or you're interested in becoming one of those, go to the Discord that is in the description of this video and hit up the head of one of those areas. We're always looking for members to join us. That's it from us for today's video. So thank you all for watching, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're interested, and hit that like button if you liked the video. Until next time, peace out mortals, have an amazing day.